Good, um, good afternoon. I'm Jan Hiku, and I am busy unpacking the use of IESVE as a building performance assessment tool. Um, it's a series of short videos that unpacks the different um, tools that, that, that you might find useful in your studies. Note that this program has a lot more to offer. And I think if, if you are interested in using it, I would suggest that you choose a theme to start analyzing and working with and then explore it. And there's, um, yeah, there's certainly a lot you can do with the program. Um, up to now, we've we've discussed the, 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 the basic protocol for assessing the thermal qualities or the energy use of a building. We've also looked at the use of macro flow um, to define windows and so forth. And then we used a, a tool called FluxDL where we analyzed the, the, the indoor daylighting um, being the daylight factor or the, the lux levels due to the, the window placement, excluding electrical um, luminaires and so forth um, for a space itself. So it's actually quite a good tool that's the Flux DL that, that analyzes a, a space in, in a holistic way. The next tool I, that, that's really helpful is Radiance. And Radiance is, is a, I think, a very powerful program. You, you, can, you can assess illuminance, luminance, you can assess glare, lux levels, you can also actually start assessing the use of electrical lighting and so forth. We won't do it in detail in this, in this video or in this course, but again, I think that's really where the, the, the opportunity lies. Um, so what, what Flux or, or, or what Radiance IES does is it actually starts analyzing the light quality from the perspective of a user within the building, which is different from how you would measure it if you use FluxDL because there you look at the whole floor and I think it does give you a good overall understanding but you might want to start looking at specific points of interest. Um, so if you click on Radiance you'll get to a view like this again I think you'd know it by now you can change the, 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 the orientation there's a number of factors related to the location, the construction, and so forth that you can change at the top. It's, it's, the model itself is retained from what you've developed up to now. So again, you can choose to only use Radiance, so you can develop your geometry, locate it, add some construction information, and the rest can really be adjusted within the model itself. And we'll start with this first video only looking at the um, assessment of illuminance, but we'll in the next video look at changing surface qualities and then assessing glare as well. So um, first of all, you, you arrive at this view and it's and, and it's a bit different because there's a there's two two circles with an arrow and a dotted line um, or a dashed line rather and, and and the first question is what it means. Okay so what this is is it actually starts talking about the view that you will be we, we, you will be seeing. So down here at the bottom, you see there's a taskbar with a number of tables where, where we can change um, different characteristics or factors. And if you click on sky or I, this is what is currently viewed if you were to generate that view inside the building. So you can click on get position and that would be the view. Now you can also change that. As you can see, I'm changing it while I was trying to move the, the view, but either way. What we're saying here is, this effectively um, is that that's what we're going to look at. We're going to look at it from a, from a first person perspective. What this means is you can adjust this view, and I think that's an important first step. So you can't do it in axonometric, but you can do it in plan and in section. So when, you, when you're in plan, you can double right click to set the eye position or the focus position. Now, what does that mean? The eye position says, where does the person standing view from? The focus being, what do you focus on? So, you set the eye position and you set the focus position. You'll see that you've already now defined it in a certain view. So, we're looking down the wall to the back of the room. And that might be what you would like to do. You can also see that if you were to change the, 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 the 
orthographic view to, for instance, the front, you'll see, okay, from the front I can't see much because the back view and the eye view and the focus view is, is, is cl very close, closely in line, but you, let's see, maybe from right, I oh, know, it's, it's quite tricky, we, this is essentially what we see, but you can say, okay, wait a minute, I do think that I would like to change the, now you've got to keep track of this, but you can also change the the eye position to do that, um, which means I'm now looking downwards, from the ceiling downwards. Uh, that's a good question whether that you, is something you would like to view, but again, as you can see, you can actually adjust it quite a, quite significantly from from your from the various orthographic views that you've got. So let's 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 change the eye position. I like doing it in plan because then it also assumes the height of the person. You can also see down here at the bottom that you can actually adjust the um, the eye position in terms of the height itself. Um, remember that's within the whole model, so, so you have to play around a little bit. If you get your get position again, you might say, okay, wait a minute, I'm still a little bit too high, and you might actually now have to change a little bit of this view in the process you get position which is still too high so you, you you'll probably have to go back to your your front view and actually try and okay try and get to be a to be a little bit lower um, there are I know that in Revit it's a little bit easier to or in SketchUp to move around it all programs have different characteristics. It's not the focus of this program is not to walk around or move around. Okay, but so so you can adjust it. You can get a view which 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 works better. Um, you can also change the date of that point of observation. It's really important. It's it's something you you, you would like to change. And then what you can do is you can also save this view. So you can press save, call this view two for instance, and that means. If, if, if something changes, let's say you or, or let's say you go back and come back at a later stage and you want to assess something new, you maybe want to assess a new date, um, then you then you can actually you know, just just to, to, for a point of illustration, you can actually fix that view again. So currently we, we don't want to save the view now. We can look at the get position and here we're viewing this corner of the building. We say yeah, but that's not quite what we wanted to check. And we can go back and say, no, I remember saving this view to, if I go to view two, there we go, view two is correct, that's what I wanted to view. Okay, so you can select that view. Now the view has been selected, you can also change the date, I think that's pretty straightforward. Um, what we'll do next is, we will then look at the illuminance. In the next movie or video, we'll look at the luminance itself, but we can look at the illuminance, you can change if you if you click on it, you can actually change the the work surface height if you wanted to. Um, I w I wouldn't do it. Um, I would just, you can keep it as it is, um, and you can change the 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 quality um, of the of of the um, of the simulation. It's high generally works quite well, and um, you can press simulation. I will simulate it and we'll continue with the video after the simulation in terms of how we can actually assess and view the, the image that's been simulated. So start simulation and we'll pause the video here. Good, welcome back. We've just finished the simulation. So this will be the screen that you'll be seeing. And um, what you do is you go to view images. And you'll see you can actually do quite a few images um, in this and, and there's just the basics of it, um, so it gives you an, an idea of the size of the image and so forth, um, some basic information about it, but what you can do is you can double click on it and there you go. Now you've got an image which has assessed the illuminance, remember the lux levels. Um, you can, there's a few options of what you can change. You can save and copy and print so forth. I think that's that's pretty straightforward. Um, you can change the exposure. I haven't had use for that. It's simply just the exposure of the image itself. So the, the higher the exposure, it's like a, the more image. I don't think it helps with the analysis really. 
So I would keep it as it is. Um, and then if you click on summary, it gives you a basic summary of the image itself. So this is the nature of the image. It's not really helpful, but it gives you um, just, uh, um, um, yeah, information about the image. And, and then you could also ultimately start analyzing it. So you can run a specified contour generation. So you can, you can run a analysis now to give us an understanding of what the lux levels are that we've now um, observed. We press OK, it runs it, and there's your image. Okay, so you can see a very high lux level on the sides. It's similar to what we've seen in the, in the view, but you can also start to see where the sources are, what happens on the ceiling, and so forth. Um, this is a first image, I think that's helpful. Next, you can actually start clicking on different points in this model, as you can see what I'm doing now, and that gives you an understanding of the lux levels that we're reading here. Um, <clears throat> you can also allow for grid setting, but as you can see, this is really only on plan views, and I don't quite see the sense. If you do that, you'll probably rather want to use lux DL then to actually view it. What's really helpful, though, is you can change the units themselves, which actually means is we change what we're looking at. Remember we spoke about um, daylight factor. Foot candle doesn't quite help us with our metric system, so we're not looking at lumens per feet. We're really looking at lux. And sky factor, I wouldn't bother. I mean, it's, it's not going to mean anything. It's not something what you'll be viewing. But as soon as you use um, daylight factor, do you see suddenly... Well, not suddenly, but you can actually now view and understand what the daylight factor within the space is. Now, you can imagine that this can be really helpful in much larger spaces, if you have large um, and, 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 and more complex spaces, which, which, which you can certainly um, model in radiance. And again, you can generate a, 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 a contour an image of the daylight factor and you can view the daylight factor here. So that's what happens on the surfaces. So, so I would say as a first step, this the, the Flux DL tool, I think, is a very good basis to work from. But you might want to use the Radiance tool in terms of daylighting and illuminance and daylight factor to understand what happens within the space when you're working with, with it. Obviously, nobody goes and sits at the very top of that ceiling <laughs> where the daylight factor is one. So it doesn't quite give you much help there, but if you start working with much more complex spaces, it starts giving you ideas of how it performs. And ultimately, in the next video, we'll also discuss glare, because I think that that's really where, where, where a lot of the, the value lies. You can start seeing where the sources of glare are, and you can actually start analyzing it. We'll only cover it very briefly, because glare obviously gets very complex as well. Um, and it's not quite the focus of this course, but um, a good basic start for using radiance in terms of um, the lux levels and in terms of the daylight factors. Once you start including luminaires into this, your lux level analysis can be much more rigorous. And I do implore you to go and, and there's lots of information available, but go and explore the use of, of luminaires in this, in this tool. Good. So the next video we'll, we will look at um, luminance then and glare. Thank you.